In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at fades, and we're going to apply some basic edits to some regions, and then apply fades to smooth out those edits. What I've got so far is a drum set foundation and this organ gate that I created in an earlier movie, and they sound like this. Now, I've also got a, a funky wah guitar, and it sounds like this in combination with the others. So what I want to do is I want to grab some of these um, more percussive sounds uh, like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and select them, use the separation tool, option click and drag them out. So we went over that in a previous tutorial. And I'll just click them and drag them to a blank area so I can use them without uh, hearing the other two tracks. I could always solo the other two tracks, but I prefer to do it this way. And now I'll take a listen. So I'd like to basically create a, a rhythmic bed of that. And so I'll duplicate another one and take a listen to the combination. It's a little slow. Um, I want duck -a duck -a duck -a duck -a. That's, that's the rhythm that I want to hear. So I'll get in really fine using the grid. And I'll use the selector tool and select this much. Take a listen. Oops, let's try it again. Wrong key. Okay, and now let's try separating that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four transients, one, two, three, four, and I've got five transients here, one, two, three, four, five. So I'll use the trimmer tool to trim back uh, right to about there, because I only need four transients in the second um, rhythm. Get rid of the outsides, I'll trim this first one so that it trims right to um, the first set of transients. I'm in grid mode right now, and in a minute I'm probably going to go to slip mode so that I can fine tune my adjustments. But right now, let's just work in grid mode and see if we can get pretty rhythmic with this. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that gives me eight hits. <laughs> but it doesn't quite sound as precise as it needs to be. So I'm going to use the time tool, drag this one out. Let's go into slip mode and trim out the first one. What I want to do is I want to trim it out right to the transient because the next transient tells me where the hit is. Okay. Now I'm going to take the next one and overlap it Oh, it's too far. So that, and we'll zoom in real fine. And we'll actually make the track height larger. And let's hide the drum track and the organ track so we can just see the guitar. What we're looking for here is we're looking to take this particular, oh, let me zoom out, this particular region. And we're trying to get the transient to be the same intensity as the previous region. And we're using the transient um, as an alignment tool because it is an in the best indication of a rhythmic hit. So in slip mode, I can freely move my regions. I'm not constrained to the grid. And I'm going to freely move it so that it's just about there over the first region. Okay, now let's take a listen. Almost. And I'm also missing a little bit of the lead up into the first region. There's kind of a, a walk into the um, first hit. So I'll take the trimmer and trim this back. And there's a little bit of goodness there. A little bit more. Okay. Now, to smooth out this edit, 
what I'll do is choose the selector and highlight around the edit and zoom in. And I like to get really fine with these edits and then choose Apple F for fades because that's what we're talking about in this particular tutorial. Now the fades dialog is pretty complex because one of the strength of Pro Tools is the ability to edit together multiple regions and use fades as the, the way to hide the seams, if you will. So we can use the options at the left to either composite the two waveforms on top of each other or display them on two different uh, visual planes to look at the composite waveform put together of both of them. Um, I like to actually use it so that I can see them both separately. And we can choose different types of fades, so equal power or equal gain. Here I'm going to go with um, an equal power fade since both of the regions are the same thing, the same source. And as well, we can choose to move the fades by clicking the fade and doing more of a fade in, less of a fade out, more of a fade out, less of a fade in. And you can see how Pro Tools will interpolate the material so as to um, render the fade correctly. Okay, and we can also choose none under link and then we can actually affect each fade separately. Um, but I only do this in pretty rare circumstances. So I want to do it just about like that. And so what I'm trying to do is get about an equal um, amplitude or height of the waveform across the two fades. Choose OK. Oh, that looks like that might cause trouble. But let's take a listen. Huh, that's OK. OK, so now that I've done that fade, I, for good measure, I like to fade into and out of the edit on a very, very small level. This represents a sample level view of the region. And this middle line is what we call the zero crossing. Now, above and below this line, um, this is a visualization of air molecules compressing and rarefacting in order to give us sound. And when all of a sudden you just cut the region when the um, compression and rarefaction that is above and below the line is not hitting the line or the zero crossing, you can create um, a click and we want to avoid that. So what I like to do is I like to zoom in pretty fine, almost to the sample level, highlight a portion of the region and then command F and apply a fade. I zoom out. So you notice that that's a really, really tiny fade. And then I approach the end of the region Okay, and see this one actually is crossing zero. It's coming up a little bit above, but it shouldn't be too bad. But because I am actually a bit obsessive compulsive about this, I'll apply a fade. Zoom out and take a listen. Great, there's no clicks. That sounds nice and rhythmic. Uh, now the question is going to be if we can get it in time with the music or not. Uh, so let's zoom out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take both of these and I'll consolidate the region. And so that creates a brand new region. It renders the fades. They're no longer there. I'll drag this down to create, or I'll create a new track rather, a mono track. And drag this down. And mute the guitar on the top track because it sounds the same. I won't show that guitar either. Let's rename this to Waka. Okay. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take this particular region and loop it. So if I take the loop tool and just extend it out, you'll notice, oops, let's try this again. Let's do this in grid mode too you'll notice that I can extend it out the full bar, but let's take a listen to see if it actually is in time. It's a little fast, actually. It's, it's a little too quick. So what I can do here is knowing that each of these pulses is sixteenths in 4-4, um, four, four, and each of these transients is sixteenths, 
I can use the time compression expansion tool to essentially pocket this um, to get a better uh, feel for uh, the rhythmic nature of this particular um, example that I just created. So I can click and hold and choose TCE and it just about is two beats so I'll drag it so that it is two beats. Now you'll notice that the sixteenths in the organ part are very precise. They're right on the grid. But the sixteenths in the walk-up part, for lack of a better uh, term, are not. They're actually kind of off the beat. So let's just take a listen to it and see how off it is. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. Let's loop this. And we'll loop it just, hey, let's just do the whole four bars. Okay, and that's pretty much in time. You know, we could pocket it a little bit more, and we use the term pocket um, as a kind of verb, as a way to take these regions and move them closer to the actual beat and make the um, music sound tighter. But the thing is, we don't want to pocket too much because that can take out the human element because human beings aren't metronomes and they do play a little bit behind, a little bit forward of the beat and it gives it a really nice human type of groove. And I think that's what's happening here is it's just a, enough off of the organ hits that it, it sounds like a more human being playing, but then if we move it too much to the organ hits, it can really just kill it and uh, make it too rhythmically um, accurate and precise. And so now we've got our wakas um, accompanying our groove. And, you know, we can essentially take other portions of that um, guitar riff. And we could, if we wanted, we could edit um, the chords together and make something really interesting to go against this. But we won't. We'll save that for another day.